When it comes to Formula One races, a topic that is talked about a lot is DRS, or the Drag Reduction System. But what exactly is it? How does it work? And what is it even used for? Well, if all those questions are in your mind, just stay tuned in till the end of the video, because today, we'll tell you all there is to know about DRS. But before we start, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. First and foremost, let's start with the basics. What exactly is it? Well, DRS, or Drag Reduction System, is a pretty controversial topic in the F1 world. But basically, it is a device which is controlled by the driver, and it aims to help them overtake and increase their chances of wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. The system involves the driver opening a flap in their rear wing, which helps them reduce drag levels and gain top speed. This system was introduced back in 2011, and it still remains in use, although the rules of DRS did change over time. But no matter what the rules, DRS has remained a huge topic of disagreement for F1 fans, and even the competitors themselves. If there is so much controversy, then I'm sure we're all wondering the same thing. Why is it even used in the sport? Primarily speaking, DRS is an overtaking aid which was made specifically to make overtaking easier for F1 drivers. Overtaking is one of the most exciting parts of a race, and DRS was implemented to dial up the excitement. DRS can allow the driver to increase straight line speed by dumping rear wing drag through a slot. This slot can be opened when a car is running within one second of the car in front. But not just that. This system can also be used by drivers on practice and qualifying laps when they're running alone on track. DRS is widely criticized because some fans and competitors believe that it's unfair that you can gain a speed boost by simply pressing a button, which means drivers are artificially able to gain time on the rivals ahead of them. Overtaking is seen as a challenge in F1 racing, and a lot of people claim that DRS takes away from the skill of overtaking. But here's the thing, DRS is not a simple button that just lets drivers overtake automatically. Sure, there have been some occasions where its power has been considered to be too great and passes have taken place before braking zones on straights. But generally speaking, the system aims to help drivers overtake when they would be stuck in dirty, turbulent air without DRS. However, the latest generation of F1 cars are designed in a way that allow drivers to follow more closely with a reduced dirty air effect, leading to the thought that DRS would finally be dropped. That is an aim of many F1 sporting bosses out there, but it doesn't seem like DRS would be dropped anytime soon. But let's get a bit more technical now, shall we? Let's talk about how exactly DRS works. This might get a bit confusing, so try to keep up. In the middle of an F1 car's rear wing is a flap, and DRS controls this flap by using an actuator that can be opened when drivers push a steering wheel button after they enter a designated part of a track. This designated part is known as a DRS activation zone. And once the button is pressed in the zone, the flap opens, which reduces the surface area of the rear wing, thus reducing aerodynamic drag and increasing straight line speed. This button can be pressed and DRS can be used by a driver during a race if he is running within one second of a car ahead of him. And this applies even if the car is being lapped. On the other hand, DRS can be used at will during training, but only within the DRS activation zones. Normally, the number of DRS zones is different for every track, and it's calculated by different characteristics. However, typically speaking, each main straight on the track features a DRS zone. 
However, if a circuit has a particularly poor reputation for passing, more DRS activation zones can be created, which can include runs featuring shallow corners. Also, the race leader can't use DRS unless he is behind a few cars who are getting lapped in the DRS zone. Until 2013, these zones didn't exist, and drivers could use DRS at any point on the track to reduce their drag. However, this led to teams implementing setups for qualifying, but hampered drivers attempting to race wheel to wheel. That's why things are different now. The one second gap between cars is measured at specific points before a DRS zone, and these points are called detection points. If the car is measured less than one second behind the car in front, a signal is sent to the car, which allows its DRS to be activated in the particular DRS zone. Typically, the drivers are informed that they can use DRS by dash lights activating on their steering wheels. For the car in front, teams can radio their drivers to warn if a rival is within the one second gap. The attacking driver can manually activate the DRS by pressing a button on their steering wheel. This button can be arranged on the front or the back of the steering wheel, depending on the preference of the driver. Also, it's completely up to the driver if they want to activate DRS or not. It's not required to activate it if you're within the one second gap of another car. It depends entirely on the driver. Also, pressing the button too early means DRS won't activate at the desired point, which can lead to a delay before the flap is finally opened. And with that, we come to the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, press the bell icon so you never miss out on more interesting F1 content. And I'll see you guys next time. Till then, peace out and have a great day.